Hello everyone, this is the full presentation for the paper Efficient Search for Optimal Diffusion Layers of Generalized Fasting Network. I am Baptiste Lambar and this is a conjoint work with uh, Patrick Derbez, Pierre Anafouk and Victor Molima. So we talk about generalized fasting networks. So it's one of the main construction to build uh, block ciphers. And the idea is that we have um, several um, uh, phase states in parallel, so that you can see here on the picture with different uh, f function which uh, depends on the key and then to mix everything together we uh, simply have a permutation pi um, which is applied on each um, block of the state <coughs> so this construction is um, uh, quite well known and the main advantage is that it's very cheap to implement because you only have to implement a bit permutation the f functions and a few uh, XOR and branching uh, but the a small issue is that uh, it has a slower diffusion compared to, for example, uh, SPN. But um, this is actually what uh, I will talk about in uh, this talk. And to make things um, a bit uh, easier, I will first and immediately forget about the definition of the F functions um, because we actually don't um, need them uh, in this work. So I only consider that there is some function S, you can think of it as just an S box. Uh, the key is added onto the state in some way, we don't really care, we are only interested here in um, the permutation pi. <coughs> what we are interested in is uh, the diffusion round. So, what is this diffusion round? The idea is that we will um, uh, examine how each block uh, from the plain text diffuses to the different blocks of the cipher text. So, for example, if I take the first block here in red, and I see how it diffuses to other blocks, I just need to uh, see what propagates through um, each uh, round of the cipher. So I see that this first block is uh, diffused to um, these two blocks after uh, uh, two rounds, and then after three rounds it's diffused to these uh, three blocks, and then I keep going and on and on until I reach uh, full diffusion, so until each block here at the output depends on uh, this first block and I see that I need six rounds for this specific block to fully diffuse this. And then I can do it for, well, the next block and for this one I only need uh, five rounds to read full diffusion and I can keep going for each of them. So this uh, diffusion only depends on the permutation pi, so which is why we forget a bit about the f functions. Um, it's quite interesting because it's tied to some um, bounds on the security against, uh, for example, impossible differentials and integral attacks. And we can do it for encryption, for, so from uh, plain text to ciphertext, but also from, uh, for the decryption, so from ciphertext to plain text. And again, we can take one block and see how uh, plain text block depends on uh, one specific uh, output block. So here I need five rounds to have full diffusion from this block to uh, the output, and I can do it again. And in this case, so we say that the, max uh, the diffusion round is six because the maximum number of rounds we need to have full diffusion for each block, both from input to output and from output to input, is six. So this diffusion round has been uh, studied a bit uh, before. Uh, the first work about it was uh, done by Suzaki and Minmatsu at uh, FSC 2010. Um, they especially gave uh, a lower bound on the diffusion round on the permutation, depending only on the number of blocks. And they also did an exhaustive search um, for a number of blocks up to 16. And what they observed is that each and every optimal permutation in this uh, specific case, so up to 16 blocks, is um, even odd. So I will uh, detail a bit later what we mean by uh, even odd permutation, but this is uh, why we focus on this class of permutation later on. And what they also did is give a generic construction such that uh, the diffusion round of the permutation um, is guaranteed to be um, two times um, the uh, logarithm of k. But in general, this, this uh, generic uh, construction is not optimal, but still it was thought to be uh, quite good at the time. And then last year, uh, Koshua et al. Um, went a bit further, and by um, using an equivalence relation for even odd permutations, they were able to find all optimal even odd permutations for uh, 18 up to uh, 26 blocks. And 
Um, they were also able to find some good candidates for 32, 64, and 128 blocks. But uh, especially the one for um, 32 blocks was actually already known from the work before by Suzaki and Minimatsu. <coughs> and so we still have this uh, open problem. Is this permutation on 32 block optimal? And why do we ask ourselves this question? It's because the diffusion round for this permutation is 10, so we need 10 rounds to read full diffusion. But the lower bound um, that uh, Suzaki and Minimatsu um, uh, gave indicates that for 32 blocks, we, maybe we could have some uh, permutation uh, reaching full diffusion in 9 rounds. So what we did in this work is, well, we actually solved um, this problem, which holds uh, since 10 years, and we actually showed that this permutation was actually not optimal. And to do so, um, we provide a new characterization for the diffusion round, and especially this leads us to a very efficient algorithm to search for optimal even odd permutations. And again, we only focus on even odd permutations. And this allows to give us um, new results on uh, 28 up to 42 blocks. And while I will not talk uh, much about it uh, in this presentation, uh, you can check the paper uh, for a um, quick uh, structural um, security evaluation for all permutations we found. So I keep talking about even odd permutation, but what are they? So if you represent your permutation as a list of integer from um, 0 to k minus 1, where k is uh, the number of elements, then an even odd permutation is a permutation such that every um, even number is sent to uh, an odd number and vice versa. So if we have, for example, this permutation pi here, we can split it into two parts. So first the even part, so which we denote by p, and p is defined such that um, the image of an even number 2 times i by the permutation uh, pi is uh, equal to 2 times p of i plus 1. So you can clearly see that uh, every image through pi of an even number will be odd. <coughs> and in the same way, we can divide the uh, odd part of the permutation, which we denote by q, and again, this is defined as um, the image through pi of uh, 2 times uh, i plus 1 is equal to 2 times uh, q of i. So in the rest of this talk, I will only <coughs> consider um, even odd permutations, and I will uh, exclusively use um, the notation p and q instead of pi, because um, that's actually this uh, way to denote uh, in an even odd permutation that uh, we exploit. And so what um, we can take a look at is what happens if we have an, an ideal diffusion. So assuming that uh, we examine um, the diffusion of um, one block um, of index uh, 2 times j, what happens if um, we just look at uh, how this block diffuses and we assume that there is uh, never collision. So we always reach uh, different blocks. <coughs> so we start from um, an input uh, block uh, 2j, and um, well, after the first round, uh, since it's even, it's only diffused to well, actually the same block. So, no, no, uh, not much to say here. Then we apply the permutation p because it's even, and then we land on an odd block. <coughs> and now, since we uh, are on an odd block, well, this one will diffuse to two blocks, so one uh, even and one odd block. And uh, we can keep going like this uh, until several, uh, several rounds. And for example, after uh, five rounds, we can see that this blocks 2 times j diffuse, uh, diffuses especially to six blocks uh, 2 times uh, j50. And we can actually compute j50 as uh, p times p times p times p of j. <coughs> and we can um, so keep doing this. So we can see that it also diffuses to this one. And... Um, Etc. until we uh, uh, examined all of them. So you can see here that uh, I only focused on diffusion from an even block to an even block, and we show in the paper that this is actually sufficient. And what this gives us is that what we call the diffusion set. So the diffusion set here, uh, j, uh, 5j, is the diffusion set for five rounds, and the diffusion set is um, this set of uh, expressions. And the idea is that the block of index 2 times j will diffuse this to every block of uh, 
indexes contain in this diffusion set. So if, uh, if the diffusion set contains uh, every element, then we will have uh, diffuse to uh, each possible block and we actually reach full diffusion. So if we take a look at something maybe a bit more visual, here uh, on the first column I uh, wrote the diffusion set for seven rounds. So it's uh, again only expression depending on P and Q, and in the remaining column um, I evaluate this diffusion set on different value of J for the um, cyclic shift permutation. So you only shift um, each block uh, of uh, one index to the right and it cycles um, at the end. And you can see that, for example, if I evaluate the diffusion set on the first blocks of, of index j equals zero, then the diffusion set only contains um, four different elements. So, which means that this block will only diffuse to four blocks, and we are in the case of k is equal to eight. So, if we want full diffusion, we will need to diffuse to actually eight blocks. So you can clearly see that uh, the cyclic shift does not reach full diffusion after this many rounds. And you can check again for the other um, value of j, but again this one does not diffuse fully, and this is actually just the case for uh, every block using the cyclic shift. On the other hand, if I use an optimal permutation which reaches uh, full diffusion, then you can see that if I evaluate for the same permutation set, the same diffusion set, so this one doesn't change this, but if I now evaluate this diffusion set on the first block, then you can count, but trust me, each and every element is reached, and each and every element belongs to this diffusion set. So we have eight different elements, we have all possible different elements, so this permutation actually reaches um, full diffusion. And this is also the same for um, each uh, subsequent block. <laughs> so using this um, characterization, so this diffusion set, how can we search for an optimal permutation? So just to first give a very generic idea, um, the first thing is that we um, use back um, the equivalence relation proposed by uh, et al. last year, and the idea of this equivalence relation is that from the k factorial uh, squared or uh, even odd permutation in total, we can reduce it to uh, nk times uh, k factorial, where nk is the number of partitions of uh, the integral k. Essentially, it's the number of cycle structure for a permutation of lens, of lens k. And to give an idea, for example, with um, 32 blocks, this means that um, we only have 2 to the 52 permutation instead of 2 to the 88 permutation to consider, which is already quite a nice reduction, but um, still a bit high. So the main idea to actually um, find optimal permutations um, is to use two things. <coughs> so first, I, I would give a bit more details afterward, but um, if we guess um, some elements in the diffusion set, uh, for example, j8, uh, so after 8 rounds, actually, uh, by computing these elements here in red, we already have information to compute um, the information in another diffusion set on block uh, p of j. So this is very useful because it means that um, we can actually save some computation to not make uh, redundant guesses. And using this and uh, a branch and bond approach, um, we can actually go through um, every permutation in some sense, so we don't examine each of them one by one, but we can actually prove that um, we went through um, all perm possible permutation and find optimal permutations. So to give a bit more details, I first need to uh, give a bit, uh, uh, to give some observations. <coughs> so first, um, uh, we give a bit of details in the paper, but um, checking um, the diffusion set of a given permutation is very easy and can be very efficiently implemented with stable lookups. So this means that um, for a number of blocks up to 26, we can actually just do a very naive exhaustive search, so going through each permutation one by one and check it, uh, if the diffusion set um, contains all element to check for full diffusion. So this does not give new results because it was already known from the previous work, but it shows that we can actually do something very simple to check off uh, all of these cases. So what we decided was to focus on uh, 28 up to 42 rounds for which the lower bound to reach full diffusion is uh, 9 rounds for each of these cases. <coughs> and the main idea um, for our algorithm is 
that we will fix um, P with a given cycle structure. So this is according to uh, the equivalence relation. I refer you to the uh, paper for uh, full details. And we actually search for Q uh, using this P such that we actually have full diffusion. And the issue is if we want to check if we have full diffusion, we need to um, consider, for example, uh, the diffusion set, uh, so J8 of J for block J. But uh, computing this diffusion set requires to know almost all of uh, Q, so it's not very efficient to just guess Q and uh, compute this diffusion set and see if we have full diffusion or not. But what we can observe is that computing the diffusion set for a given number of rounds actually requires us to compute the diffusion set for any lower number of rounds. So what that means is that for the diffusion set uh, J8, by computing this set, we will actually also compute the diffusion set for 7, 6, 5, etc. rounds. And another thing is some computation between um, two uh, diffusion sets for the same number of rounds but for two different blocks can be the same. And this is what I mentioned a bit earlier. <coughs> so another observation is that if we know the permutation P and computing the diffusion set uh, for uh, six rounds only requires us to make uh, seven guesses on Q. So this is not a lot considering that Q is um, at least of size uh, 14. So we need uh, at most half uh, uh, at most, uh, we need to guess half of Q. And then if we want to compute the diffusion set for um, the block P of J, then we only require to get at most three additional guesses on Q. Because as I said, we already have some information from the first uh, seven guesses on Q, and we can show that um, if we want the diffusion set of uh, the block P of J, then we only need uh, three more guesses. <coughs> So what we can do is that um, we can see that the diffusion set for six rounds can be written as uh, the union of two uh, disjoint sets uh, X and Y, and we can write the diffusion set um, J8 as um, the following ex expression depending on uh, X and Y. And it would become a bit clearer why we use this expression in the next slide. So how do we search for optimal permutation? So as I said, we first start with making our seven guesses on Q to compute the diffusion set for block J for six rounds. And we split this diffusion set into two parts such that we can write our diffusion set uh, for uh, eight rounds um, this way. And remember that um, we fixed um, P, so we know the permutation P, and we know the diffusion set um, J6, so we also know X and Y. So this means that the first set here, uh, p squared of um, x, uh, x union y, is actually fully known. We know, we know all of these elements, we can compute them, and since they are known, we will put them in the set uh, kj. Then in the next set, um, well, we made some guesses on q, and we know p. So maybe we actually know some elements in uh, p times q of x. And these known elements will be put also in KJ. Uh, and the other ones will, um, will be put in another set, so uh, X tilde, which is defined as um, the elements for which we do not know um, the image of X uh, through uh, Q. And for uh, the next set, uh, we can do the same, except that this one is uh, the reverse. It's not P times Q, it's uh, Q times P. And again, some elements might be known, and for the other ones, we put them in a new set, uh, Y tilde, um, which are elements of um, P of X union Y, such that um, Q of X is unknown. So <coughs> we can write now, after, um, after having um, done these seven guesses on Q, we can write our diffusion set uh, J8 as K of J, so elements that we know, union, uh, uh, P times Q of uh, X tilde, union Q of Y tilde. And if we have full diffusion for um, the block J, what it means is that we have the following constraint. So we have that the size of this diffusion set is um, at least K. We have at least K elements. So what we do is that we, we set this constraint. We, we keep this constraint um, somewhere. And 
like I said earlier, we uh, keep making guesses on Q to compute uh, the diffusion set for another block, and especially for the block P of J. And by doing so, and doing the same thing I described for the block J, we can get um, another constraint, uh, C and J prime, where J prime is P of J. And what we do is that, according to uh, the guesses on Q, we will also update um, and uh, check the constraint uh, C of J and see if uh, we, uh, it can hold. And I refer you to the paper to see um, how we can uh, check uh, if a constraint can still hold, considering what we already know about P and Q, because this is a bit technical. And we just keep going. We make a bit more guesses, and uh, we keep actually building new constraints depending on uh, new, the new diffusion set we uh, examine. And we keep going until either um, we were able to uh, fully guess Q, which means that we were able to find the permutation, or uh, we stop um, when a constraint, uh, when we, we can see that um, not all constraints can um, be satisfied, so which is possible with uh, how we uh, evaluate um, the feasibility of these constraints. And if we are in this case, so one constraint cannot be satisfied anymore, we just uh, go back in the um, uh, search tree and make another guess and keep going. So overall, in uh, what did we do? So we provided this new characterization uh, for the diffusion round in a generalized facet network, so this diffusion set. And using this, we were able to design a very efficient search algorithm, um, which is highly parallelizable, so it's just a branch and bound, so it's very easy to parallelize. And for example, we need at most one hour for each case or for each number of blocks uh, on our um, 72 thread uh, server. And in terms of concrete results, so the first one is that for um, 28, 30, 32, and 36 blocks, the optimal number of rounds for full diffusion is 9, and we found all optimal permutation reaching this um, uh, number, uh, this diffusion round, so uh, a diffusion round of 9. And especially we can see that uh, this includes the case of uh, 32 blocks, uh, for which we didn't know and before, what was the optimal? We had a permutation for 10 rounds, and we showed that this permutation was not optimal, and we can actually do better. For 34 blocks, um, our algorithm was able to show that uh, we have no permutation reaching full diffusion over 9 rounds. So it means that uh, at best we could read full diffusion in 10 rounds. And we were actually able, uh, able to find some permutation reaching full diffusion in 10 rounds, so we know that for this specific case, the optimal number of rounds to reach full diffusion is 10. And finally, for the, for the remaining cases, um, our algorithm was also, was also uh, able to show that there is no permutation reaching full diffusion in 9 rounds. Uh, but the best we were able to find was a permutation reaching um, 11 rounds. So there is still a question about, uh, is it... Uh, possible to uh, reach full diffusion for these cases in 10 rounds, which we leave as an open question. And of course, another open question is, can we keep um, going even further on the number of blocks? But uh, in our case, with this algorithm, it was a bit uh, quite hard, um, because the complexity of the search um, begins to be um, very high. So thanks for listening, and um, if you have questions, um, you can ask them on uh, the Zulip chat, uh, which I guess uh, will happen, and um, otherwise, um, see you during the live talks of uh, FSE uh, 2020.